Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to try something a little bit different. I reached out to one of my community members to interview him on a recent trade that he took. He trades based off of the 4 hour and the 15 minute time frames. He was able to catch a 6.2 R trade on NZD USD using the 4 hour and 15 minute strategy. I'm going to put the trade up on the screen so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. In this interview we take a deep dive into his chart work and the reasoning behind this trade. Let's dive in. I agree with you, man. The, um, the four hour and 15 minute strategy, it's really good for people who work a typical nine to five job or even have a busy family life or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason it appeals to me even personally so much is because when I first started trading too, I was full time in construction. Um, I had a residential carpentry business that I was operating for, um, close to 10 years, being able to trade higher time frames. It allowed me to to really do both at the same time. Obviously, I decided to go full time with trading, but strategies such as the one that we're going to talk about today, it really helps you, um, you know, take advantage of the market while still having other sources of income as well. And I think that's really beneficial for a lot of people to understand is that you don't have to be full time at the charts on the one minute or one second time frame, you know, scalping every move every day of the week. Yeah. Like you can really have a life outside of trading, and I think that's really important for everybody to understand. So yeah. yeah, I'm happy to hear that, man. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the beginning, I was like, I had the the feeling like I have to be on the charts like 24 seven, basically. Yeah. Because I started with crypto, and uh, yeah, crypto runs 24 seven, not like uh, forex. I was like, yeah, if I not get every move, I'm gonna miss something. But I right. mean, the market is always there. There was there will always be the next the next setup. And yeah, I mean, when you when you take like the four hour time frame, maybe take some time to get to a setup. But I mean, yeah, as you said, when you work a full time job, you don't you don't have the time for checking the charts all day long. That's just yeah. not possible. Just yeah, not possible. it's true. Yeah, that makes it like I just said uh, basically an alarm in trading view. Right. It, um, so I get an alarm on my phone when uh, the price hits a, a point of interest. Yeah. And if I have time, I can check. If not, then um, I'm probably going to miss it and go to the next one. But it takes away a lot of pressure. Yes. For me, at least. For me, at yeah. least. That's yeah. wonderful. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you regarding that is because you mentioned how, uh, you know, with the four hour time frame, sometimes it takes a while for price to get to your points of interest, right? So do you, um, what does your watch list look like? Is it just like one or one or two pairs? Or do you have like a big watch list that you monitor? So you find opportunities more frequently? No, I have a pretty big watch list, to be honest. Okay. Um, between 15 to 20 pairs. Okay, interesting. I in in this call, there was a discussion about how many pairs you should like watch or should you, you should have in your watch list. And most of you guys said like, yeah, let's one to three pairs. But I feel like since I'm just focusing on the four hour time frame, I basically do my work um in the evening for the next day. Yeah. I scan through all the pairs. Um, just on the four hour time frame, I set my alarms and then basically forget it. And once an alarm hits, I'm going to check back and that's it basically. So it can happen that at, at some point, uh, during the day, I get three alarms at the same time because yeah. some pairs like move pretty equally. Um, and sometimes I don't get any alarm or just one alarm. So that's why, um, because those four four hour setups don't ho don't happen that often during the day, I feel like I have the capacity to track more pairs than just one or three pair. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. And that conversation that we were having in the Discord too, it really does depend on on your trading style, right? Like one to three pairs is really good if you're like an intraday trader or even a scalper, because then yeah. your focus isn't so. Uh, scattered all over the place. But even me personally, when I use the four hour and 15 minute strategy, um, I typically utilize that more so when I'm traveling, or if I have too much things to do, and I can't be at my computer full time, yeah. typically when I'm traveling, though. Um, and during that time, I will also expand my my search to to multiple different pairs, typically just like the major pairs, I prefer those. Mm -hmm. But 
yeah, I don't just stick to like Euro USD, for example, if I'm if I'm trading those higher time frames, because if I were to do that, I might be lucky to get like one trade in a month, you know? So yeah, yeah so yeah, it really but, depends and, on and the style. To be honest, those entries that you get out of those four hours PO, POIs, I mean, mm -hmm. the risk to reward are crazy. I mean, they are, yeah. If you get like, I mean, to be honest, if you just get one trade per month with like one to six or one to eight with a decent uh, funding behind it, that could be your monthly salary. There, true. I mean, yeah. you just have to be or more. patient to wait for the setup to come to you and not chase the setup and uh, enter too early or whatever. Then, yeah, 100%. That's basically, the problem that I have to face sometimes as well, be patient enough to wait, to wait for the confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the next thing I kind of wanted to ask you is... Um how you found this specific trade because it caught my attention because it was such a clean trade and it fit the four hour and 15 minute strategy so perfectly. Mm -hmm. I just had to reach out to you and, and ask if you were willing to talk about it with me. Is there any way you could uh, share your screen with me and just like go yeah. over the, the process that you went through to find the trade and execute yeah, it? I can, I can share my screen. So mm -hmm. what I was seeing was basically that back here, we were in an uptrend in a four hour uptrend. Um, and once we were here, there was a right here, there was a break of structure or change of character on the four right. hour time frame. So once I saw it, I was like, okay, um, maybe we will get back to the order block that was responsible for the uh, change of character. So I yeah. identified the, the responsible order block, which is this one yeah so i basically marked it out such a beautiful reaction from that order block too four hour and then it basically i mean yeah if you if you take the the measurement tool yeah it took like over a week to get mm -hmm. back to the four hour order block so i mean that i had a i had an alarm set here and it didn't hit the alarm in over a week yeah. So I probably already forgot about it, but once. Um, That's the beauty of having alerts, right? Or alarms. Yeah, exactly. Because it so reminds you. That's beautiful. So let's do it with the with this tool now. So once it hit the order block, as you teach, I went down to the fifty minute time frame. Um, for confirmation entry, basically. Yeah. So right here, I have marked out basically the last low on the 50 minute time frame. And then when we let it play, yeah, we can see right here. If you look at the numbers of the cans you, between this one and this one, you can see it's a minor liquidity grab in the yeah. interest. That's right. what you teach as well. So I marked this one out as a liquidity grab and basically moved my low to here. Yep. Makes sense so far. If you play it out now, that was... Um, the point where I was a bit struggling because as what you teach is since there are only wicks, you wouldn't consider this as a break of structure, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not just yet. Yeah. Not yet. Exactly. So I marked it out as a break of structure, but, um, or change of character, how you want to call it but I marked it out with this line. So it's not I a, see. so I wasn't sure if I should count it or not as one. Yeah. But still, um, I was marking out the, the order block, which would be responsible for the break of structure on the 15 mm -hmm. minute time frame. And then basically, yeah, we had here, like what you teach is a real break of structure. Oh yeah, very uh, clear. 
with some volume. Um, yeah, everything that you with fair value gap with everything that you that we are looking for basically. Yeah. So I mark this out as well as a break of structure and mark the 15 minute time frame or the block again. And then um, at this point, I was already using the FIP tool um, to see what is premium, what is discount. Perfect. Um, Love to see that. And I already saw, okay, this order block, I'm not really interested in because, so right now, if the price will re uh, reverse back up, I wouldn't be interested in trading this one, but I would still be interested in this one because it just made all so much sense um, to get the limit order at this one. But I still um, was waiting. And when I saw that the price is going up again, I was sure, okay, that was the low. So I could use this FIP um, that I pulled. Um, and then I basically set the, the sell limit here. And to be honest, I don't feel that comfortable with like those really tight stop losses with like a five, fifth, five pip stop loss. I wouldn't really feel comfortable, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I just need some more time or some more practice. So oh, that's, that's understandable. Why, yeah. That's why I basically um, use like uh, a stop loss above the recent high. Yeah. Uh, which would be like a, 13 or maybe I use like 15 pip stop loss. Um, that is the safest point in my opinion yeah. too, because everything yeah. after that was pretty choppy. So it's really hard to define a clear high to put the stop loss at. So yeah, those absolutely. recent highs were the, definitely the safest place to put them. Yeah. And I mean, 15 pips are still, still pretty good. Oh, that's still, it's, that's fantastic. Yeah. I often have trades that have 15 pip stop losses too. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. And then, I mean, next point was, okay, where are I going to take profit? That mm -hmm. was the next question. So I used, again, the four-hour time frame where we could see we had the downtrend. And then yep. once we broke that high, we had, again, a change of character here with a very impulsive move to the upside. Yeah. Um. And I was uh, looking for the order block that was responsible for it, which was basically this one. Marked it out. And that was basically my final take profit. Um, yeah. And that would be, so if we use the measurement tool to basically see, to pull it down here. Yeah, it's a one to 6.24. Uh, risk to reward trade so pretty good um but still i wanted to take partial profits on the way down because i mean the worst feeling is if you are like in high profit and the trade starts to reverse again and then it's going to your stop loss um in the worst part uh, you're going to lose or just a break even so i usually take like at least 50% off at some point or even 80% just to be safe. Yeah. So I was looking, good. okay, where could I take some partials? And since I was entering on the 15 minute time frame, I was looking for a 15 minute order block. And that was basically um when we broke structure here, we had a fair value gap and everything. Um, and the responsible order block was this one. Yeah. So that was my basically TP one here, and TP two or final TP was uh, the four uh, four hour order block. And when we played out, I mean, I think this was a like a news event or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, I believe so, if I remember correctly. Um, and 
yeah, if we let it play out, it basically, yeah, hit TP perfect. I could even um, basically target those lows. They would right. have hit as well. Yeah. Very nice, my friend. That, very that nice. Like a, makes me very happy to see this. Yeah, like a picture perfect setup. Yeah. Um, as you teach with the four hour time frame, point of interest, 50 minute confirmation entry. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it 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 took some time, um, like from here to till we entered the the trade, basically ninety, almost twenty hours. But that's the nice part, uh, as I said, if you have a a day job, um, and you're working full time, you have a lot of time to figure out what is going on on the charts. There's no rush. Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's much more relaxed that way, I find. And yeah. it's interesting, too, because in terms of the stop loss placement that we were speaking about earlier, because there was a news event involved, it actually spiked through the 15 minute order block that you were initially targeting. Yeah. So yeah. it violated that, but you were still safe. You were kept in the trade because you decided to place your stop loss at the recent highs, which was definitely a wise decision. Any tighter and it wouldn't have made much sense and you probably would have gotten stopped out and taken a loss on that trade. Yeah, if I would have basically took those highs as stop lo as a stop loss, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It would hit my well, stop loss, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad it worked out for you, man. That's a beautiful trade. Uh, yeah. Pretty textbook example, and it's just really wonderful to see. So I, I really appreciate you sharing this analysis with me. You're welcome. You're welcome. And yeah, I mean, thanks to you for sharing your knowledge. And my pleasure, man. That's what I'm here for. That's uh, it's your strategy, basically, what you teach, um, and I'm just uh, applying it basically on a daily basis. And so yeah. far, it worked out well. Basically, I had. Last week, when I took this trade, I had two other setups, also four hour, 15 minute time frame, mm -hmm. um, as well, one to six risk to reward, but I wasn't able to catch them because I was asleep or on uh, during work. Right. So if I could catch three of those setups, that would be um, 18%, basically, if I would risk 1% on each trade, that's crazy. That's crazy. more than some people do in an entire year. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So again, thank you for sharing that analysis with me. That was, I think, really beneficial for everybody to see. And it makes me very happy. Um, I wanted to ask you, how long have you been in the Currency Pros community? For uh, like two weeks now. So I joined in the beginning of April. Um, I think I went through the course, the video course in like two days over the weekend. Okay. Um, read the ebook that you wrote, which yeah. is on point. Thank and you. Um, then basically went over the course again. Yeah. Second time. To really like get all the information that you share. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's it basically. And from there on, I start to apply the strategy um, on a daily basis. Yeah, and it works out pretty well. If I mean, if you follow those steps that you teach, it's pretty simple. Um, you just have to be patient, basically. Of course, yeah. Well, that's yeah. that's incredible to hear, man. That's such a short amount of time. It's interesting because a lot of people have different time frames in in terms of how they learn how to trade. Some mm -hmm. people grasp it in a few months. Some people take like a year or two. And then, then there's people like you who seem to grasp it within a couple of weeks. So that's, that's just phenomenal. Um, so it, has there been any, any struggles with the strategy that you've encountered, whether that be psychological or technical, like anything that, that stuck out to you as like a pain point or has it all been pretty straightforward so far? No, I wouldn't say I struggled with anything, to be honest. Um, I had some questions in that I got answered in the discord that's uh, nice to hear which is uh, very helpful so the members yeah. are very helpful in this I mean that's the whole point of it too so that's that's really nice yeah. to hear that's the whole point of me starting the community is because trading can be very lonely and if you have a question it's like well who do I talk to I don't you know not many people have like friends or family that are traders as well so it's really good to connect with other people uh, doing the same thing so that's, yeah, that's true. fantastic true yeah. yeah no I mean 
really it, it, the video course you have is basically on point you i mean i just can speak for myself so i have some trading background already um i can speak for a completely newcomer in the trading industry yeah but um for myself everything on point everything understandable with a lot of examples life examples or like uh, replay examples that you um, uh, show the strategy yeah that's fantastic man I'm I'm really happy to hear that uh, that puts a smile on my face so thank you for sharing that with me today man yeah you're welcome yeah um, I think that's that's all I wanted to ask you really I have uh, okay this is this is very fulfilling for me to hear that that perspective from you and I love seeing you post your results in the community um it motivates others as well so please keep doing so and just uh keep doing your thing man i'm rooting for you i'm excited to see your progress and your continued success and i appreciate you taking the time to share this with me today you're welcome you're welcome i will i will um keep posting um the setups when i see something the results yeah since uh the goal um is still to get like a to become a full-time trader as well in the long run. Yeah. And um, yeah, let's see. I mean, let's I, see. Put in work. I put in the work, um, that's for sure. So <laughs> let's see if it's going to fulfill. Yeah. You can do it, man. I believe in you. You got a good head on yeah. your shoulders and I, I know you're going to make it happen. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, brother. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video and gained some value from it. As you can see, the strategy is pretty straightforward. Trading really shouldn't be complicated, and oftentimes it's the simplest strategies that yield the best results. We really don't need to know why every single tick in the market occurred, and we certainly don't need to be creating new acronyms for everything and fancy terms for things that already exist. All we really need is a consistent edge over the market that can be executed over and over again, and that can really be as simple as you just saw today. Thank you all for watching, and make sure to hit the subscribe button for future content.